Hiraj, another uh, exciting victory. Congratulations. No, another final here with Rafa. We'll get to that later. But first, just talk about Nick a little bit, Raj, how, how good he could be for this sport. And you almost feel bad for him when the crowd is just so against him. And they were picking on from minor things that you, I bet you didn't really care about some of the things that he did. And just talk about what this kid could be for this sport. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I think uh, people are really getting to know him now. They see him play more often. Um, it's his third, second, third year on tour now. Um, so he's coming back for the second, third year now to tournaments, which is uh, which is good. So you really see, you know, how he's evolving um, as a player and a, as a person, and that's why I think it's exciting following uh, youngsters, you know, because uh, they change their look a lot or they <laughs> try out things, they play differently, and uh, they get to know their game much better. Um, he's clearly got a big time game. He's got one of the best serves in the game. Um, you know, and he's got great focus now on, on his serve, which I like to see. And, um, you know, it's just going to take time for him to really, you know, be able to focus point for point uh, um, and improve that. But, uh, you know, you're right, uh, the crowds jump on it pretty quickly, but it makes for a good atmosphere, I guess, at the end of the day. So it's not all that bad. And, of course, I think he's good for the game at the end of the day. Roger, early in, early in the first set, uh, he did the your patented saber move a couple of times. Um, and, you know, he did a couple of other things along the way, too, that might have been seemed, you know, not maybe not disrespectful, but a little bit like he's going to show you he's not intimidated. Does that kind of thing bother you? Do you think about that? Do you notice that kind of thing on the court? What's your feeling about that? Yeah, I mean, I was expecting him to do it today. I was expecting him to do trick shots. I was expecting all that stuff. So um, I would have been surprised if he didn't do it or didn't try to do those kind of things. So for me, it was really important to do the same, you know, try actually to also play um, the game that way and make him feel that, well, that's how I, al I actually also play the game, you know. So, uh, and I think I was able to do that on a couple of occasions too. And, uh, but at the end of the day, stay concentrated, be focused point for point, make him work hard, and hopefully he runs out of gas towards the end, which never really happened. But um, I think I was very happy with my level of play, and it was an exciting match uh, with some great shot making. Um, yeah, so um, no, I was expecting it, all those things. Also the saber, not on the first serve particularly, but on the second serve, which he didn't do. <laughs> How much of a toll have the last two back-to-back -back matches taken on you on your body? Are you thinking about taking another six months off, or you can go on? <laughs> don't, 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 don't jinx stuff, but... Uh, um, no, look, I actually felt really good this morning. Um, I don't know if it's a surprise or not, but I was expecting to be maybe more stiff or um, just hurt or some or something, you know, so that I would feel something really. But I actually woke up and felt great. So uh, that was good. And throughout the match, I didn't have any problems. So uh, and now I actually feel pretty good. So um, having a day off now is clearly nice to have. Um, I could play tomorrow regardless, but it's definitely good, you know. And Maybe not a bad thing that it's not best of five sets anymore in the finals, but uh, even that, you know, <coughs> knowing that w I won't play for a while, um, it's easy now to just compress all the energy you have and give you one last push, so um, I'll, I'll try hard on Sunday. Hi, Roger, congratulations. Um, following a bit on, you know, those type of shots, obviously throughout your career, you've always surprised people with amazing shots that are not even the book of tennis, but especially this tournament, you know, the backhanded volley, three quarters of the court, those drop shots, drop shots against Burditch that came back, you did them again today. Is this something, um, because you're enjoying more your game, you know, has it come with age? Do you feel less pressured or is it like 2017 Roger edition? <laughs> I mean, I think I always pulled off some nice shots uh, along the way. Um, the thing is, you have to remain in the tournament to pull them off. And because in practice, nobody really cares. <laughs> so uh, it's good to do it on center courts uh, when you get all the camera angles, and then it looks even more incredible. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the truth, you know. Um, and when you're winning, you're always right, and everything's even more golden and more beautiful. But uh, no, look, uh, I'm definitely trying to play creative tennis, um, you know. Try to go for my shots, and and I do believe then good things do actually happen. So um, yeah, so uh, I did play some good shots, especially also in Indian Wells, so also in Australia, and I'm able to take the backhand earlier, which 
allows you also to hit more um, back out when it's off the baseline, which I enjoy a lot. Roger, is it, um, I know all the victories are gratifying, but is it especially gratifying to be able to win a match like that where at your age you had to really, this guy was obviously fearless coming at you, you had to sort of be young again and brash and creative and does yeah, that? Felt, yeah, I mean it did, it did feel very good because, um, you know, um, you, do, you don't very often play um, three breakers in a match. You know, uh, maybe last time I did it, it was against him. I don't know, probably. And then the time before that I did it, it was probably against my coach here in the finals. So, um, so it's nice to win those, you know, and winning breakers is always such a thrill. So uh, I try to um, really fight for it like I did against Burdich. And, um, you know, I can't always show my fighting skills because, you know, everything else sort of takes over. But uh, um, it's, it's great winning this way, especially, of course, I remember the loss um, against him, you know, a few years ago, which I think ended up being 14-12 in the breaker in the third. So it was just, yeah, it was, it was rough. It's the birthday of my boys. <laughs> I wasn't with them and I had that match. And I, anyway, it was just a bad day. So, so it was nice to get this one tonight. Uh, Roger, considering where you were sort of at last year, um, away from the Grand Slams, how, how big an achievement do you think it would be for you to sort of complete the double Indian Wells, Miami, and especially playing Rafa for it? How special it would be? Yeah, yeah I mean, on, I have not thought about it, to be quite honest, because I, uh, when I came to Miami, I just thought, ah, this is probably, again, it, like I did in Indian Wells and in Australia, I just thought eventually it's just going to, catch up with me. Um, Miami's probably not going to work that well because it's slower and uh, and I already won in your wells so let's be realistic here and you know semis would be an incredible run so here we are in the finals and I get a chance to to win the tournament. Um, still I feel like there's a mountain to climb in, in Rafa. Um, he's not won it yet before. He's definitely feeling fresher than I feel right now but uh, that's that's not a problem. I'll be I'll be ready on Sunday, and um, I think it should be it should be really exciting because we had this epic match in 2005. The finals was unbelievable. Um, it was a, a a turning point in my career, to be quite honest. Because for me to um, to be able to focus for I don't know how long we played, maybe four hours, and smashing four and after four and down the line. I remember um, I felt like. You know, I had to learn how to fight in matches, and there I showed it to myself and I showed it to my team that I could do it. And it was against somebody who ended up being my biggest rival. Um, it's definitely going to be very special playing Rafa here again. And uh, of course, I'm thrilled for him as well that he came back as well as he did after the comeback, you know, that he, the struggles that he had last year. So, I mean, it's, it's like, feels like old times, you know, we're playing each other every week now. Can't get enough of each other, but. Uh, <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not our last match. Hi. Could you talk a little bit about the relationship with your coach, Ivan Ljubicic? Um, what kind of a coach he is and uh, what kind of stuff do you think he brought into your game? Yeah, last year was hard, you know. He came in in a time when <coughs> I actually felt, um, you know, pretty good at the beginning of the year with Australia. And then things got complicated and then what does a coach do? I mean, he supports you through the tough times and he's a friend of mine. So I think he helped me with uh, decision making, uh, um, just staying calm um, like everybody else on, on the team. There was no panic. Um, and we always got together regularly and talked about what's the next plan. And he was uh, incredibly supportive. And uh, he always reminded me uh, that the good times are going to come, come around. It's not going to be easy. But uh, it's just what it is right now, and make the most of it. And uh, and then once I got back in practice, it was really you know just it's a lot of fun. Um, he's he's a good guy, and uh, um, you know he definitely has ideas. And I told him, look, uh, whatever he has to tell me, uh, as big the criticism is, that's why he's on the team. Like everybody else, they can criticize me left, right, and center. I don't care. That's why. He, I paid him, that's why I have them around me, and um, he's great for that, and he's, uh, he's also got a winner mentality, which I like. Um, he wants me to win every single point, every single match, and uh, 
he definitely is, uh, you know, it's great for the team and uh, it's gone very well, so I'm very happy. Rod Roger, you left, you left the court after the second set, so you had some alone time. Um. Yeah, not really. <laughs> I was just changing my, my whole outfit because I was drenched, so but I wasn't really before myself. But were you, what was going through your mind at that point? Because you're in the middle of a real dog fight. What? That was after the first set. Right. Yeah, it was after Did I the first set. I'm sorry, yes. That was after the first set. Right. Um, no, for me, it was just really a really quick change. Uh, I didn't think much of it. Um, just get out there quickly, not to interrupt the, the match. Um, and then after the second set, maybe that's more interesting for you. I don't know. I was just actually sitting there and actually feeling good about the match still, even though. I had just wasted, squandered maybe match points. Uh, I still felt I was really calm in that tiebreaker, and uh, I felt like, you know, uh, okay. I went for the backhand on the on the return on the second serve. Maybe I should have chipped it. I don't know. Okay, it's it's fine. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll move on with it. But this first set, I was much more um, um, nervous about it for some reason. You know, and I think that calmness that I actually had from after winning that first set, carried all the way through till the very end. And I think that's why I stayed calm. I, I trusted my shots, even though I maybe misfired a couple, I, I stayed calm. And when I was sitting there, I was actually, okay, no problem, we'll take it from scratch here. And um, yeah, it was, it was a good feeling to actually feel that way, because you don't always feel that way. You can feel really frustrated at times, and I didn't let that happen, which is good. Because I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> we got time, 